Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. We know that the entrance of your word gives light and it gives power, gives strength, and leads us to pray so that the grace of God will increase and multiply in our lives in Jesus' name. We pray that tonight you open our eyes of understanding so that we'll see what you have for us in your word and your word will benefit everyone without exception in jesus name thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray there shall be a headquarters amen god bless you you can be seated we're coming to our study tonight and we're coming to galatians chapter 4 reading from verse 1 now i say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. Verse 2. <coughs> but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Then in verse 3, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Verse 4, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth a son, a mage, mage of a woman, mage under the law. 5, To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. In verse 6, and because we are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Verse 7, wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Verse 8, how be Albeit then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. Verse 9, but now, after that ye have known God, or rather, are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Verse 10, he observed days and months and times and years. Then in verse 11, I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Here is Paul the Apostle writing to the Galatians and by extension is writing to us and speaking to us. Paul the Apostle with his team had gone to the provinces of Galatia and he had preached the gospel the pure gospel, the saving gospel, the sanctifying gospel, the empowering gospel. And Paul, the apostle, had emphasized that the gospel is based on Christ, not on Moses, based on the gospel, not on the law, based on the fact that Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary and he died for everyone and that our salvation our redemption our acceptance to god is on the basis of that good news of the gospel of the lord and that as if everyone repents and turns away from sin and believes on the lord jesus christ he is saved that the just shall live by faith and it is that faith the faith we have in the lord after we know that Christ has died for us and there is no other sacrifice, he is the final sacrifice, he is the substitute, he is the savior that as we trust him, as we lean on him, as we confide in him, as we have absolute unshakable or wavering faith in him, we are saved. And then the grace of God will come into our lives, our lives will change, our lives will be transformed. Because when grace comes into our lives, a change will come, a transformation will come. That the Galatians had heard that the Galatians had accepted, that the Galatians had believed, and that faith led them to salvation in Christ. But then 
some religious people came to them Judaizers came to them and they said the blood of Jesus was not enough they said their repentance was not enough they said faith in Christ was not enough but the people should keep the law of Moses and so they were trying to convince them to keep days and weeks and months and years they were trying to convince them to bring in circumcision they were trying to convince them that they should keep the law of Moses so that their salvation will be firm their salvation will be confirmed and Paul the apostle said I marvel that ye are so soon removed from the one who has called you into the grace of God and you're receiving another gospel which is not another but that those who pervert the gospel of Christ that's what he's saying here he's now trying to bring them back to the faith they ought to have absolute unshakable faith in Christ and he now uses the image and the picture of his servant and of his son he's saying that the people in the old covenant they were like servants they didn't have the inheritance they ought to have in Christ and when somebody is a child is under tutors is under governors is under uh, the schoolmaster that will bring him to the real scene the inheritance in the Lord and then he said have you not got that why will you go again to the beggarly elements of the world why will you go again to the old covenant which is abolished already because it does not have power to save at the end of it in verse 11 he said i'm actually now in doubt of you and i'm afraid you came into the gospel you believe the gospel you received the gospel and salvation was given to you but now you have turned away and i'm wondering now all the time I spread with you all the teaching I gave you all the labor that I exercise myself in to make sure that the truth the saving truth the sanctified truth the absolute truth that it will remain with you I'm wondering have I labored in vain because it's church in doubt of them and you think about yourself you received the gospel the pure gospel and you were saved and your life turned around and your mind and your heart was now focused and centered on Christ your Savior and by his grace and by his strength and by his uh, abiding presence in your life you are living consistently in the Lord and because you are looking unto him the glory of the Lord was being manifested in your life now maybe reading books maybe listening to others maybe listening to people that do not have the real gospel the full gospel you have been shaking and you have been diverted away from the foundation of the gospel you are in the same situation with the galatians and paul if paul were to come to you today he will say i'm afraid of you lest i bestowed upon your labor in vain as paul the apostle endeavored to bring the galatians back to the gospel that they will stay at the very center of the gospel and live by the gospel i pray the lord will do the same thing in every one of our lives that we will not be diverted from the gospel we will not be beguiled out of the truth the saving truth into another thing in our lives in jesus name and as he talks about the sons of god we want to have the perception and the understanding of what we have in Christ as believers, as sons of God, and other people that are fully, completely yielded and surrendered unto the Lord. Tonight, we'll title the Bible study, The Stage and Status of the Sons of God. The Stage and Status of the Sons of God. Three things we're looking at in the study tonight. Number one, servants under the elements of the world. Those who have not truly and fully and completely become the sons of God. But they're connected with God in a way. They read the Bible, they, but they do not understand what the gospel really means. And they are servants under the elements of the world. Number two, son sent forth. That's Jesus Christ, the Father sent forth the Son. Son sent forth, mage of a woman, born of the Virgin. And because he was born of the Virgin, 
of a woman he has connection with us but because he was born without the intervention of a man with the virgin is purely from god and he is god hundred percent god hundred percent man is able to lay hold on the hand of god is able to lay hold on the hand of man and is able to reconcile is able to bring us together because he's as holy as god and yet he bore the sins of man of humanity the son sent forth Mage of a woman. Then number three, as we now come into the kingdom, our sons of God, our children of God, we are sons exalted as heirs of his wealth. Everything he had, as we gave our sins to him, he gave his righteousness unto us. As we give our powerlessness unto him, he gives his power unto us. We're sons and we're exalted to be heirs of his wealth. Let's come to number one. Number one, we're looking at servants under the elements of the world. Look at Galatians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. Now I say, that the heir, as long as he is a child, a child without understanding, a child without instruction, a child without the depth of knowledge of what he has in the father, a child that does not know there is a change of dispensation and a change of covenant, a child that is uh, ignorant of the father, ignorant of the provision, ignorant of himself, ignorant of his possibilities, it says that even though he is an heir, as as long as he's a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. Though everything in the new covenant now belongs to him, though everything Christ has purchased on the cross of Calvary now belongs to him, but a child. It's a babe. He doesn't have knowledge. He doesn't have understanding because of that, in practical terms, is no different from a servant. Look at verse 2. It says in verse 2, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Is under tutors, is under uh, under governors, the people that govern his life, and the people that control him, and the people that direct him, because not knowing the left from the right not knowing his right and his privilege, not knowing the provision of Calvary for him. Uh, the Pharisees will come, they want to tutor him. And the Sadducees will come, they want to govern him. And the people who think they know life more than he knows a little child, they want to take him by the hand and lead him because he's still a child, ignorant of his heritage, ignorant of his inheritance. Look at verse 3. It says in verse 3, even so we, when we were children, and we knew next to nothing, we were in bondage under the elements of the world, under the rudiments of the world. We were not living by the promise of Christ. We were living under the principles of the world, the elements of the world, the instructions of the teachers in the world, and the proverbs and the pattern of the people of the world. That's all we knew, even though we're going to church and reading the Bible, yet we were under the elements and the rudiments of the world. Look at three things here. Number one, the status of a child as a servant. Number two, the sin seen under the charge of servants. Number three, the slaves before conversion on the servitude. Look at number one. Number one, the status of a child as a servant. Uh, look at Galatians again, chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. Look at that. The heir. The one that will inherit everything, all that Christ has done and provided at Calvary, the heir. But he is a child. He does not know what belongs to him yet. He differs nothing from a servant to whom no promise has been made, even though he is Lord of all. Look at chapter 3. Verse 24, in chapter 3, verse 24, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. That child that has not known grace 
has not known the fullness of grace has not known the provision of grace is under the law all he knows all he has been taught you must not do this you must not do that you must not do this other thing and that only brings him under the law that he cannot fulfill it says wherefore the law was a schoolmaster to bring us unto christ that we might be justified by faith we cannot be justified by the law we cannot be set free by the lord by the law we cannot be equipped to live in righteousness by the law but that law will be a schoolmaster bringing us under conviction bringing us under condemnation bringing us to the realization of our powerlessness and then we'll be asking who shall save me from this body of death and that schoolmaster will then lead us to christ who alone can forgive who alone can set us free and justify us by faith it says in verse 25 it says but after that faith is come we're no longer under his schoolmaster after that faith has come and faith has taken us out of servitude out of slavery and has brought us to salvation in the service of the lord now christ is our example a perfect example christ is a model and christ is now a pattern and it shows us more than the law can show us and it gives us power the power that the law could not give us the power to now live in righteousness look at romans chapter 7 reading from verse 14 romans chapter 7 verse 14 for we know that the law is spiritual but i am carnal sold under sin in verse 15 it says for that which i do i allow not the law has taught me that this is wrong and so I said, okay, I'll not allow that in my life. I'll not allow that in my language. I'll not allow that in my behavior. I'll not allow that in my character. But the law that showed me this is wrong did not give me the power to live an overcoming life. So that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. It's just talking about the absence of grace the absence of spiritual strength and the absence of spiritual power i make resolution and i have determination and i even have the knowledge that that is wrong maybe i turn the resolution into prayer but the prayer is not the prayer of faith that gets that has grace from god and so after the resolution after the determination, after the thing I said, I must not do that again. I still go back to do that because I'm familiar with the law. I'm not familiar with grace. That which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. Verse 16, if then I do that which i would not i consent unto the law that the law is good nothing wrong but the law is an instructor it's a teacher it's a schoolmaster it's a tutor it's a governor to direct you to say this is the way now the power to rise up and follow that way that's not in the hand of the law it's in the hand of christ in verse 17 now then it is no more i that do it it is no more i that do it was he saying i'm not as free by myself as i thought you know people say i am free i am free no you are not free if you don't have christ if the son therefore shall make you free he shall be free indeed you are not free you are under the tutors you are under the governors you are under the schoolmaster you are under the power of the one of the law and it can only condemn so now then it is no more either do it but sin that dwelleth in me that's the condition of the one who has not had christ 
be the savior, be the Lord, be the pastor, be the power of his life. In Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 5. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They that are still in the flesh, not really born again, they do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. In verse 6, it says, for to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 7, verse 7 says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The carnal, the fleshly, the worldly, the ones chill under the elements of the world, the rudiments of the world, that is only under the schoolmaster. The schoolmaster makes him or her feel condemned. But the power that comes through salvation has not come to him, is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Then in verse 8 it says, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. How do we please God? Faith in Christ. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, let's come to number two here. Number two, the season under the charge of servants. The season under the charge of servants. It tells us in Galatians chapter 4, reading from verse 2, but he is under tutors and governors. Who is that? The one that's still in charge, though he be lord of all, and everything is available for him, but he differs nothing from his servant. That one is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Until the time appointed of the Father. Now Paul the Apostle, an Old Testament scholar, is looking at all the times of the law. From the time of Moses, all through to the time of the kings, and the time of the prophets, until the edge of the old covenant. And the saying, the time appointed is the new time when Christ came into this world. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Before that appointed time, before the coming of Christ, before the sacrifice at Calvary, before the blood that takes away all our sin, before the power of the cross that came into our lives and makes it change until the time appointed when we are under tutors and governors. Uh, let me illustrate that to you in Genesis chapter 15, uh, looking at verse 2. Genesis chapter 15 verse 2, and Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? Seeing I go childless, and the, the, the steward of my house, that the tutor, that the governor, the steward of my house, that the one that oversees everything in the house, this Eliz is this Eliza of Damascus. Now, join that with Genesis chapter 24, reading from verse 2. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant, Eliza here, of his house that ruled over all that he had. Eliza, the chief servant, the eldest servant, was the one that governed all the house. Even things concerning Isaac. Isaac was a child, he was heir. He was to inherit everything from Abraham. He was to inherit the promise of God and the provision of God and the power of God and the prophecy that God had given to Abraham. As long as he was a child, he didn't know, he didn't have, he couldn't manifest a free attitude to get things. Even to get married now, Abraham told the eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my tie. And then in verse 3, it says, And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son. The son was under 
the tutelage, the teaching, the instruction, the governorship, the leadership of that servant. That's what Paul the Apostle is illustrating. That when you are under the law, the law of Moses, you cannot have all the inheritance you have. You don't even know all the inheritance you have. Then it said, you are not taking a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, but thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son I see the question now is can I do that today can you do that today can we do that today a believer wants to get married and now instead of praying by himself instead of seeking the face of the Lord by himself he says look at what Abraham did Abraham called the eldest and the eldest servant and gave the responsibility to him can I do that today no I cannot no you cannot no we cannot why at that time I seek being a child not, not, a, not a toddler and not a little boy, not a little, not a small person. He was getting to the age of 40, but the period he lived, he was still a child, under tutors, under governors, under the schoolmaster, and so the light had not fully come. And they had to do that because you don't know what you have when you're in that situation. But now, we know Calvary, we know Christ, we know the promises of God, we know the provision of the Lord. We have come from that season and from that time and now because of where we are, we know our rights, we go to God directly. And as we go to God, he says, ask me and I will show you wonderful things that you never knew. The point is the season of being under those tutors, under those governors, under the law, that season is now past. Look at number three here now. Number three, the slaves before conversion under servitude. The slaves before conversion under servitude. It tells us in Galatians chapter four, looking at verse three, even so we, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. Even so we, to start with, we choose we. We were in bondage under the elements of the world. The Jewish people at the Bible, they have the old covenant. They didn't see Christ there. They didn't see faith there. Many of them, a few of them saw faith there. By faith Abel, by faith um, Enoch, by faith Noah, by faith Abraham, by faith Sarah, by faith uh, Jacob, by faith Isaac. Some of them saw faith there and Habakkuk says the just shall live by faith. But the majority of those Jewish people, they didn't see faith there they just tried by themselves even so we when we were children were in bondage under the elements of the world now the um, the, the gentile people they too all those gentiles they didn't know how to live they were looking up to their philosophers they were looking up to their poets they were looking up to the epicureans they were looking up to the people of athens they were looking up to human human beings like themselves and if they could, whatever they could not hear from them they did not know and those who have looked at philosophers of the past like Plato like Socrates like all those people they were like that they were children they had not known Christ because those philosophers did not know Christ they couldn't tell them how they will be free they were just trying and trying and trying and even Nicodemus came and Jesus said he must be born again he said how I never heard that and Jesus said are you a ruler in Israel and yet you don't know this are you a governor in Israel and you don't know this are you a teacher a tutor in Israel and you don't know this if the tutor does not know if the governor does not know if the schoolmaster does not know how can he tell the people he's leading all those leaders and the people they were leading it says even so when we were children we were in bondage under the elements of the world. And in verse 9, that's why it now says in verse 9, but now, after that ye have known God, or rather, had known of God, how to ye again, to weak and beggarly elements were on, ye desire again to be in bondage. Don't you know, if you go under the philosophers, 
if you go under the tutors and the governors that do not know how to be free themselves you too you will not know how to be free if you were free you will lose the freedom that you had got look at verse 10 it must say ye observe days and months and times and years that's what they came to because they lost the vision and they lost the understanding of the fact that the Lord had brought them out of Judaism, of traditional religion. And they went back into that bondage again. That's why it says in verse 11, it says, I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. In Colossians chapter, Colossians chapter 2, reading from verse 8, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the principles of men after the pattern of men and after the rudiments of the world after the beggarly elements of the world and not after christ i pray we'll know the value and the treasure of christ in every one of our lives in jesus name i didn't hear your amen Point number two now. Point number two, the son sent forth, made of a woman. In Galatians chapter 4, reading from verse 4, it says, But when the fullness of the time was come, when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth a son, made of a woman, made under the law. Have you ever thought about the time of the world in which you were born. What if you were born at the time of the judges? What if you were born at the time of the chronicles? What if you were born at the time of Jonah? What if you were born at the time of Malachi? What would you have got? But now the Lord himself has favored me. Me. And you are born at this time. Christ has come. Christ has died. Christ has provided salvation. Christ has provided healing. Christ has provided redemption. And Christ has provided total freedom, emancipation from all the powers of the enemy. And that you are born at this time, on this side of the cross, we shall be thanking God for the time in which we were born. Amen. That's the time the Bible was not available in everybody's hands to read. Those many years ago, you were not born at that time. But God has given the Bible. He has given the old covenant and the new covenant. And God has sent you to school. And uh, there was a time when they were not even educating uh, girls, uh, ladies. And the girls could not read because their parents did not see any value in sending them to school. But you were born at the time when the Bible is available. Not only in Latin, not only in Greek, and not only in Aramaic or Hebrew. The Bible available in your language and then you went to school and you can read and you can see it for yourself what a great time to be born there was a time when the church was not well established in the doctrine of salvation doctrine of holiness and the doctrine of the power of the holy ghost if you had been born at that time all you'll be doing you'll not even know the bible because it's only the priest that will read it in latin to the people and the people did not understand latin but now you are born at a time when the Bible is available and then you can read and then you can have a copy of the Bible in your hand in due time and what a blessed time to be born now if anyone perishes does he have any excuse no he doesn't have any excuse because when the fullness of the time was come God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law look at verse 5 in verse 5 to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons look at verse 6 in verse 6 and because we are sons god has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying 
Abba, Father. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the coming of the Son, our Savior. Number two, the conversion of sinners to sons. Number three, the confirmation of the Spirit in our spirit. Look at number one. Number one, the coming of the Son, our Savior. It says in Galatians chapter 4 verse 4, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. We're looking at John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Look at verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He didn't come to condemn the world in darkness. Why? That's not their fault, they were in darkness. He came to bring the light. And as they switched on the light, now the world could see that's the way of God. That's the way of salvation. That's the way of righteousness. And he concentrated on what the Father sent him to do. To give us light that we in the world might be saved through him. Look at um, chapter 4, John verse 42. John chapter 4 verse 42. And said unto the woman now will believe not because of thy saying for we have heard him ourselves we have heard him ourselves and for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ the savior of the world even even um, and Nicodemus did not know that, but it's a very chance that the Jews will not have gone to. They had the privilege. What privilege we have that those who have gone to seminars and seminaries and theological schools and colleges, what did he not know? God has brought it face to face with us that we will know that there's no other Savior, that Christ is the Savior of the world. Look at First John chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 9. First John chapter 4, verse 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. And there's no other way, no other way to live, no other way to have the life of God in man. But the Father, God, sent his Son to come and show us the life of God and to come and empower us to live the life of God that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Look at number two there. Number two there is the conversion of sinners to sons. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 5, to redeem them, to save them, to forgive them, to cleanse them, to ransom them, to transform them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons that we might receive the adoption of sons that were now adopted into the family of God were led the family of Satan the fellowship of Satan we leave all that evil empowering influence upon us by repentance and faith we come to Christ and now that we're redeemed we have received the adoption of sons into the family of God in John chapter 1 verse 12 John 1 verse 12 but as many as received him no discrimination no partiality. He wants everyone to be saved. He sent Christ for everyone. But as many as received him to them, he gave power. He gave the privilege. He gave the right to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. That believe on his name. They are not believing in themselves. They are tried and tried and tried and failed. And they know that there is no power in self-reliance. There is no power in self-righteousness. There is no power in self-resolution. But now they hear of Christ and they believe. And then new life came to them. New life has come to you. 
Look at John chapter 8, reading from verse 34. John 8, 34. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin, the servant of sin. The Lord Jesus was not condemning anyone. He was just telling them the truth and the fact that when a little sin comes in, that little sin will be expanding and building up. It will eventually overpower the person and the person will not be able to shake it off. It becomes a servant of sin. And in verse 35, the Lord revealed and the servant abideth not in the house forever. There is a forever house. There's an everlasting house. There's an eternal house. The sinner, overpowered by sin, habitual sin, cannot abide in the house of God, that's house above, forever. But the Son abideth ever. Look at that. The servant abideth not in the house forever. But the Son abideth ever. The servant will not be in the same everlasting heavenly home forever with the Son. If somebody is a sinner, continues in sin even though Christ has come to pay the price for him if he remains under that servitude of sin if he or she dies in that condition he or she will not abide forever where the son abides ever what's the solution the solution is in verse 36 if the son therefore shall make you free the only way you can live with the son forever where he lives forever is that all your sins the chains the bond the overpowering influence they're broken and now the son sets you free thank god you're free if the son therefore shall make you free he shall be free indeed you must ask yourself that question look at your past life Look at your present life. Forget about date. I gave my life to God, to Christ this day. Forget about that one now. Forget about what people call you, brother so and so, sister so and so. Forget about that now. Concentrate on this. Look at your past life. Look at your present life. Are you still in bondage to the past life? Are you still in bondage, in servitude to the past lifestyle? and to the past canon life and fleshly life remember the servant of sin will not abide in the house forever but the son abides ever and freedom is available redemption is available you come to christ in the real sense not just you know i come i come i come but you come in the real sense and the power of christ will set you free and then you'll say the things i used to do i do them no more the places i used to go i go there no more the life i used to live i live that life no more something happened christ set me free free i'm talking about you free look at number three here number three the confirmation of the spirit in our spirit galatians chapter 4 reading from verse 6 and because ye are sons god has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying abba father we get born again and the spirit of god comes into us and it gives us assurance of salvation romans chapter 8 reading from verse 15 in romans chapter 8 verse 15 for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear when you become born again you don't have the spirit of fear the fear of hell and the fear of final eternal condemnation and the fear of being lost forever and the fear of eternal punishment for your past sins you come to christ and it says we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry say that abba father that means daddy my father 
it's a it's an endearing word because of what the father has sent the son to do and the son has now saved us and redeemed us and we feel this intimacy and fellowship with the heavenly father and the spirit of god is within us crying abba father look at verse 16 in verse 16 the spirit bear it witness with our spirit the spirit capital s that's the holy spirit bear it witness with our spirit our spirit our mind our soul our heart he witnesses within us that we are the children of god children of god are they here children of god i said are they here and i pray that witness will be firm in every life in jesus name it says in verse 17 and his children then heirs heirs of god and joint heirs with christ if so if so be that ye suffer with him persecution suffer with him misrepresentation suffer with him the jeering of the unbelievers who do not know what we have but we suffer that that we may be also glorified together galatians chapter 5 verse 22 in galatians chapter 5 verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love and the spirit comes into us and from within christ abba father now he gives us love and joy and peace and long suffering gentleness goodness faith verse 23 meekness temperance against such there is no law there's no law that will condemn you anymore when all those all the fruit of the spirit they abide in your life and the spirit is resident in your heart crying abba father we'll come to point number three point number three sons exalted as heirs of his wealth galatians chapter 4 verse 7 wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if his son then an heir of god through christ look at three things in number one the possession of believers heirs of god number two the perversion of backsliders who place without grace number three the passion of the burden helper and guide look at number one number one the possession of believers Yes, of God. It says in that Galatians chapter 4, verse 7, Wherefore thou art no more a servant under a schoolmaster. Therefore thou art no more a servant under tutors and governors. Therefore thou art no more a servant yielding to the elements, the beggarly elements of this world. Therefore, wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son an heir of god through christ an heir of god through christ that is all the good things the lord has promised we now inherit and whether it's for the spirit the promise the promises are there for the soul the promises are there for the body the promises are there for your family the promises are there for the spiritual life every help we need everything we need now available because we are an heir of god through christ look at romans chapter 8 reading from verse 14 verse many as alleged by the spirit of god they are the sons of god that's what we heritage as the spirit led christ now it's our turn and we are here he knows where danger is he will lead you away from danger he knows where the pitfalls are the things we didn't know and now he leads us by his spirit away from all those pitfalls and you will not fall he leads us to the inheriting of the promises he leads us to discovering everything the lord has for us for as many as alleged by the spirit of god they are the sons of god look at verse 17 in verse 17 it says and if children then heirs heirs of god and joint heirs with christ what does that mean when christ was here he did everything he did 
by the spirit and the power of the father of god and now that's how he succeeded that's how he overcame and everything he had at that time to live a victorious life where joy is with christ and we can have all the grace all the strength all the power that christ had to live an overcoming life at that time he says joy here with christ if so be that we suffer with him that we shall also be glorified together you'll be glorified together with him in eternity in jesus name Number two here, number two, the perversion of backsliders who place without grace. It tells us in Galatians chapter 4 verse 8, how be it then, when you knew God, you knew God, you called him Abba, Father, you knew God as the one that redeemed you through Christ, you knew God as the one that blotted out all your past sins because you believe in Christ. How be it then? When you knew God, ye did service. When you knew not God, ye did service unto them which are by nature and no God. Verse 9. But now, after that ye have not God, or rather, are known of God. It's one thing for you to say, I know God. Rather, God knows me known of God. You rejoice because your names are written in heaven. How? Turn ye again to weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage. Those Galatians were being confused by traditional religious people. And they were turning their minds and turning their face away from Christ the Savior. And they were turning them to the beggarly elements of tradition. Look at verse 10, what it led them to. He observed days and months and times and years. If you were in another religion before, there were practices of that religion that they will practice if they give this to the beggar or if they do some good work they will think they are buying a place in heaven now you are born again now you're a child of god how do you think that it is a hundred naira a hundred notes of your currency that will give to the beggar that will buy you a mansion in heaven that cannot even buy a mansion on earth not to talk of buying a mansion in heaven if you are of the christian in quote religion maybe you will you are like the pharisees i fast twice in the week i pay tithes of all i have i'm not even like this publican but you know that all that did not save him now you are saved not because of your good works and not because of your obeying any tradition you are saved because christ died for you after christ has died for you and you have continued in that joy of salvation for some time now if you're feeling guilty about something if you are feeling not adequate about something instead of flying back to calvary and the blood of jesus christ his son will cleanse you from all unrighteousness you pick up the old tradition you fast and as you are fasting you are going back to what you used to do that you know god look at me i am fasting and forgive me because of the fasting i'll turn you to beggarly elements and the things that cannot save and if you have a, let's say for example you ill-treated uh, madam a and you're feeling guilty because we treated Madam A, then you do some, you do go to do some good works to Madam C, not the person you offended. You don't have the humility to go to Madam A that you offended and say, I'm sorry, I knew that was wrong. I feel this is not wrong. That's what Jesus said. You bring your gift to the altar and you remember that someone has a, um, something against your heart, against you. You leave your gift at the altar, you go to him, you go to her. Not that you go to another person, that one is the old lifestyle. When they have stolen money from anywhere, then out of that money, they, they will not return the money to where they stole the money. They'll go and give the money to another person. And if we go back to that again, we're going back to the old life. We're going back, we now observe days and months and, years and times and years. I pray the Lord will turn our focus back to Christ. He is 
the one who forgives is the one who sets free is the one who makes us to live the life well to live i pray your eyes will never turn off from jesus in jesus name look at chapter 5 galatians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 2 behold i paul say unto you that if ye be circumcised christ shall profit you nothing if they went back to the religion of the jews christ will profit them nothing look at verse 4 in verse 4 it says christ is become of no effect unto you whosoever of you are justified by the law ye are fallen from grace if we go back to the tradition of religion as we are walking the christian life and we're no more focused on christ we're falling from grace it says in hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 hebrews 10 verse 38 now the just shall live by faith to get to heaven the just shall live by faith he paid the price he did everything and even if somebody has gone away temporarily from the faith the way to get to heaven is not to work for ourselves and to do this for ourselves and then to pay the price for ourselves we come back to christ we come back to christ the just the justified shall live by faith but if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him you will not draw back it says in verse 39 but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition you will not draw back to perdition the father has brought you to his only begotten son and the father has adopted you a son a daughter in his family abide in christ abide in the love of god remember when you were a terrible sinner god loved you now that you have come into the kingdom he loves you much more and if by carelessness or prayerlessness you go back remember even before you were born again how he loved you you remember the love of god and then you come back to that love of god he will not cast you away he says but we have them that believe to the saving of the soul look at number three here number three the passion of the body our helper and guide in galatians chapter 4 verse 11 i'm afraid of you lest i bestowed upon you labor in vain paul the apostle said the galatians became a body to him he had the concern for them and he had the passion of a burdened preacher of a burdened pastor helping them and guiding them now in that body what did he do did he condemn them did he destroy them did he take the avenue and the channel of grace away from them look at verse 19 that chapter 4 verse 19 it says in verse 19 here is paul the apostle now showing his body his passion his compassion for those who have gone away from the lord he says my little children he didn't count them as enemies he didn't count them as you know time wasters they wasted his time they wasted his labor no he said my little children or for my travail in birth again i travail in birth again that was the passion of the body man the body minister i travail that is i pray earnestly i pray fervently i travail in birth again until christ be formed in you he said they could still return and no matter how far they had gone away from the lord they could still return the door was still open the door of grace is still open today amen the door to the very heart of god is still open today amen amen, amen. amen. for you the door is open for everyone the door is open and if you are in the kingdom and you want to go higher and deeper and further in the lord the the, uh, the the door is open for you today and whosoever shall call on the name of the lord will be saved will be sanctified will be strengthened will be empowered god rejects no one come and more of the grace of god will come into your life in jesus name let's rise up now and talk to the lord in prayer and take everything we've learned today to the lord and the lord will show mercy will give more grace and the lord will give everything we need and then he'll make us heirs of god and joint heirs with christ open your mouth and pray unto the lord